at low tide. American troops would land at beaches codenamed Omaha and Utah. The British would land to the east at Sword and Gold, and the Canadians would land at Juneau. After a day's delay because of bad weather, the vast armada started pulling out of British ports on June 5th. As it sailed all day towards the Normandy coast, the weather was still bad and many of the soldiers were seasick. Eddie Goodman was the young captain of a Canadian tank squad. It was a mixed mood. Some people were exhilarated, quite a few. Uh, some people were pensive and thoughtful about what they were going into. Uh, actually, after a while, when we really got moving, uh, fortunately, everybody was uh, not feeling too well because of seasickness. <laughs> so they were, they, all they wanted was to get the hell over there and land. As night fell and the hour of battle approached, some soldiers had to deal with their fears of being killed or mutilated. Yeah, I thought about it. As one of my chums said, Dan, he said, I prayed, but he said, this time I meant it. And I'll never forget that as long as I lived, sorry. And he was one of my best friends. Other soldiers wondered whether they would be brave enough to face the horror of battle. Supposing you just ran away, or you didn't get out of the boat, you just pretended to be hit, and you just lay there. And then you'd have to spend all the rest of your life realizing that you'd done this, and give anything to, to relive it and not have it happen that way. At dawn, the Allied fleet arrived off the Normandy coast and began bombarding the German defenses. And a few hours later, the Canadians boarded their landing crafts and headed for the beaches. Uh, you just sort of squat on this long bench thing. It's wet, it's cold, and it's kind of frightening. If there was one good thing about the rough weather was the boats were bobbing up and down, so the Germans had great difficulty trying to hit us, just as our people were having great difficulty trying to hit them. So really nobody got hurt until we ran aground, and then, then we really got it. Many of the German defenses had survived the bombardment, and as Canadians struggled ashore, a lot of them were cut down before they got very far. The Germans waited till we got in with the water up to about our knees. Then they started to really mow us down, and their machine guns on, like ours, have a tremendously fast rate of fire. So where I ended up, I had five other men and myself, and that was it. And when I looked back, the beach was just lined with people lying down. And I thought, my God, the company hasn't followed me in. And of course, they were all casualties. 340 Canadians were killed on that first day, and more than 500 others were wounded. But by late afternoon, despite heavy enemy fire, the Canadians had reached almost 10 kilometers inland. The British and the Americans were also ashore in strength. The great gamble had paid off. The Nazi fortress had been breached. But the battle was far from over. The fighting would continue for weeks. By the time the Allies were finally able to break out of the Normandy beachhead, 5,000 Canadians had been killed and 18,000 others had been wounded. This summer, some of those who fought there returned to Juneau Beach to join in the ceremonies marking the 60th anniversary of D-Day. And a couple of days before the actual anniversary, they took part in a joyful cavalcade through some of the towns they liberated. The CBC's Don Murray was there. Time has worn and furrowed the faces. Once they were young, scarcely a dozen years older than some of the children cheering them. They've endured, and so has the feat of arms that brought the people of bernier sur mer and Saint-Aubin into the streets this morning. This woman lived through the Nazi occupation of France. She called her presence a duty of honor owed. They liberated France, she says. Without them, we wouldn't be here, and this wouldn't be France. 
The cavalcade was another lap of honor for the aging liberators. June 1944 bound them to many of these people for life. Nicole O'Day was six when the Canadians came. She showed James Puckett photos of two soldiers of the Régiment de la Chaudière with whom she corresponded for the next 50 years. And she asked about the mysterious man from Puckett's regiment who gave her his pin before he left. She never forgot him or found him again. Her quest called forth darker memories of war. I tried to keep that as much out of my mind as possible, but it, it's still there, you know. When you come back, it, it, it brings back all those memories of what happened then. You know. But uh, it had to be done, and we did it. That's, that was the main thing. So. <laughs> that celebration overlaid darker memories. <laughs> Airman John Neal explained his medals to local children. He was already in France on D-Day, shot down five months earlier and hidden by the resistance. That's how he learned his serviceable French. We know from the memories of these soldiers... The governor general came to the party in the rain. Her words were of the impact of that day and we understand why we helped to fight here, to have a decent, honest life and the possibility for all of us to live in dignity. There were smaller and quieter ceremonies too all over the Norman coast, and some of the smallest were among the most poignant. In a Canadian cemetery, the mayor of a small village greeted a group of cadets from Quebec and he joined them in paying tribute to the almost 3,000 soldiers buried there. Four of those Canadian soldiers did not live to see their 16th birthday. The youngest was Gerard Doré of Roberville, Quebec. His headstone says he was 16, but he was actually just 15 and a half. The mayor told the cadets Canadians are a noble people with big hearts. Gérard Doré, he said, was a real Canadian, and the people of France would never forget him. There were more tributes for our veterans at the official ceremonies on the day of the anniversary itself. For the first time, the Queen was there to thank them. Britain had been directly threatened by the enemy, but you came across the Atlantic from the relative security of your homeland to fight for the freedom of Europe. Prime Minister Paul Martin said Canadians would forever be in their debt. The waters of the English Channel and the winds of the Normandy coast have erased the footprints these men left in Juneau Beach. But not even the great tides of time can wash away the deep impressions they have made in our national history and in the chronicles of the free world. French President Jacques Chirac handed out decorations. And for the first time, a German leader was there too. Chancellor Gerhard Schroeder watched as modern planes screamed overhead and old landing craft bobbed off the beaches they had once helped assault. The decision to invite the German leader to the Normandy ceremonies was a controversial one. Even after 60 years, some Allied veterans still find it hard to forget and forgive what their old enemy did. But most seem to feel that it was time to move on, time to reach out to the other side, time to remember that the Germans also suffered terribly. Almost 80,000 Germans were killed in the Normandy campaign. They lie in war cemeteries like this one, not far from the Allied ones. They are grim and stark places compared to the gentle quiet of the Canadian cemeteries. There are no hints of what these soldiers were fighting for, no monuments to celebrate their sacrifice, and almost no visitors. But this year, some German veterans did return to Normandy to honor the dead of both sides. As Don Murray reports, they reached out to their former enemies and were embraced by them. Time blunts the bitterness born of war. In the late afternoon, a group of Germans walked into the largest Canadian war cemetery in Normandy at bretteville sur lèze Among them were five war veterans. One carried the official banner of the nearby French town of saint ouen the mayor had offered it to them. Vous êtes un peuple attachant. Michel Le Baron welcomed them and called them friends. He was ten when the Battle of Normandy chewed through his region. 
He had never held such a ceremony before this year. Vater unser im Himmel. The Germans came prepared, as they had at American, British, and German war cemeteries earlier in the day, they recited the Lord's Prayer. Then they sang an old German song, I have a comrade, a dirge of battle and loss, of friendship beyond the grave. Herbert Fischbach was 18 on D-Day. He saw the invasion armada fill the horizon. He thought he would die. Instead, he was captured. Both the French, the Canadians, the U.S. never were my enemies. And that is what is so terrible in war. You are forced to fight against people whom you don't know and, and who might be very good uh, friends. In June of 2003, the Juno Beach Center opened just outside the town of Corset sur Mer. It's a nonprofit museum dedicated to remembering the war effort made by all Canadians. It also has an excellent website that you can access at www.junobeach.org. And that's News in Review. I'm Carla Robinson. Thanks for watching.